One of our own members of the True Crew has been on the Google SGE beta for over a year, and she joins us today to share her experiences of how she's seen the tool evolve over time, where it's at now, and what the implications are for your brand when it comes to optimizing search for Google, for SGE, and for large language models. Let's do this. Welcome to Content Marketing Engineered, your source for building trust and generating demand with technical content. Here is your host, Wendy Covey. Hi, and welcome to Content Marketing Engineered. On each episode, I'll break down an industry trend, challenge, or best practice in reaching technical audiences. You'll meet colleagues, friends, and clients of mine who will stop by to share their stories. And I hope that you leave each episode feeling inspired and ready to take action. Before we jump in, I'd like to give a brief shout out to my agency, True Marketing. True is a full service agency located in beautiful Austin, Texas, serving highly technical companies. For more information, visit truemarketing.com. And now on with our podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Content Marketing Engineered. I'm joined today by True Marketing's very own Vice President of Account Services, Jennifer Dawkins. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thank you. As you're known around these corners is Jen. Ooh, <laughs> Jennifer, who's that? Uh, and we're both in Austin. And uh, recently we had that fun eclipse and we were in the critical path or maximum path of visibility or whatever it was. <laughs> How did you spend the time, Jen? Um, so it was really cloudy. So I had very low expectations. Um, I actually went for a run right before it and then the clouds broke and I was so excited that I sprinted back, um, to my house and we went in the backyard, hopped in the hot tub and watched it from there and we could actually see it. So it was, it was actually one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I had was yeah. expecting nothing and it was amazing. Yeah. We had a few neighbors over and as you know, we have a couple acres. So we're, you know, out there kind of in, in where we could see it, you know, where we didn't have mm -hmm. trees blocking us. And then a neighbor behind us had their grandkids over. And so when it, when the full eclipse part happened, everybody started cheering and screaming. And, and I thought that was so neat hearing all those little kids just freaking out. And hooting oh, and that's hollering. so cool. <laughs> That's so um, awesome. But I know that's why you didn't come on the show today. So uh, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting conversation here. And I, you know, I love that I have no idea um, how things have gone for you on this, but you have been part, <laughs> well, I guess I know bits and pieces, but I don't know the, the latest. You've been a part of Google's SGE or search generative experience um, pilot. So you've been piloting this. You were part of the beta group for I think over a year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it. I just want to hear all about your experiences and insights into where you think this is going and, and maybe some of the broader implications for SEO in general. Um, but before we get started, maybe those listening don't know what SGE is. So maybe we, we can start with that. Sure. Um, so SGE is a Google experiment that is basically AI generated search summaries that is right on the Google homepage. So whenever you search something um, on top of the organic results that you're used to seeing, there is a summary of all the results um, created by AI. So it is pretty similar to maybe snippets um, to where you, know, you would type something in and the answer would pop up, but the snippets were pulled from kind of one winning website that it decided to pull from, and the summaries are pulled from across several different sites. So the way they do it is a little bit different, um, but the end result is, is kind of the same. Google's trying to serve up a quick answer and answer their users' questions as quickly as they can. Mm -hmm. As quickly as they can, and maybe there's a little bit of, we'd like to retain you on the site yeah. going on well, right? <laughs> For sure. They, For sure. Yeah, they are a business after all. Um, okay. So you signed up for this. You've been playing with it for a year. You've been having to put mm -hmm. up with all of us. It would be like, Hey, Jen, run, run this term through it. I want to see what it does. So thank you for that. Uh, what have you found valuable about it? So anytime that there's a pretty clear factual answer I need, it's, it's, it's easy to get. So if you're going to go in and you want to know what is a company's revenue or what is a good substitute for tamari and a recipe, um, something that's like pretty easy, that will come up right away. You get it, you go. It's, it's super great. 
Um, so that's been really great. The it's it being right there in Google is nice. Um, so it's not like you know with some of the other chat AI platforms that you have to go somewhere else. It's right there, and that's been really nice. Um, it the sites it pulls from are generally third party credible sites that you know aren't aren't biased. So it's somewhat trustworthy. So those are some of the good things. It's easy. It's quick. Kind of you know a lot of the same benefits from the other AI assistance. Have you found any cases where it's giving you weird answers or things that <laughs> seem fictitious or erroneous? Yeah, absolutely. Um, fortunately, less so recently, um, mm -hmm. but in the beginning stages, oh boy, it was, um, it was pulling some weird stuff. So, you know, of course mm -hmm. I would instantly search like our company and, and see what comes up and see what it's saying about that. And it was pulling from some really old, like a, an old Pinterest site that I didn't even know we created. Like I've, I've been at True for eight years and it was predated me and that was pulling up. Like, why would that pull up as a source? Um, so that was pulling up. There are some cases um, where it would, I don't, lie is not the right word, but it would, it would misinterpret the information. Um, mm -hmm. So Lily Ray is an SEO expert that I follow on LinkedIn, and she posted something that was basically a search for um, the world's greatest leaders, and Hitler came up on the list, which was obviously jarring. So I went and re replicated that to see if I could get it to do it too. And there's drop downs where you can actually see for each fact the source, and I did replicate it, and the source was an article about the most famous world leaders or something, mm. which obviously those don't equal the same. Famous doesn't yeah. always equal good or great or whatever. Um, so there were several of those kind of big oopsies and maybe some small ones that came in the beginning. It's pulling from the internet. There are sometimes weird stuff on the internet. It's sometimes misinterpreting. So definitely there's been, there's, there was some things. Yeah. Um, sometimes, also, I mentioned how it pulls from credible third-party sites, which is great, but sometimes the most obvious source would not be a third-party site. Like if you are looking at somebody's revenue or their company size or number of employees, instead of just pulling from like their public disclosure on their investor site, say, it would pull from like TechCrunch or some other third-party site that is, you know, that just, why? Why wouldn't you just pull it from the direct source? Um, yeah, so. Well, so I hear you talk ideas. about sources, which says to me that attribution is present. And I remember mm -hmm. early on, you didn't know what sources it was pulling from. <laughs> so that was really disturbing for you and you were experimenting with it. So is, is that now the case where it gives one source or several sources or how is that citation working? Because right, that's what we all care about is marketers trying to optimize. Absolutely. Yeah, that is definitely improved. So in the beginning, it would give a summary and then it would give a few sites next to it. And it wasn't really clear, like, are these related information? Learn more. Is this where you got the information? It wasn't connected. Yeah. One are these to one. ads? <laughs> um, yeah. Are they ads? Are they like, what, what are these next to it? Um, and now it's, it still has those. They're now underneath. But, um, but in addition, every line every fact has a little arrow drop down where you can drop down Ooh. and you can see where that came from okay. um and so that's helpful because then when you're looking at it, you're like that seems weird and you can drop down and be like oh well yeah because it came from the site and i don't trust that so it kind of helps you discern a little bit more instead of just taking it for for fact and kind of seeing where it came from so it's kind of like snippets on steroids it like paragraph form mm -hmm. longer form snippets is yep, what it longer means. form and and it's weird sometimes they're one paragraph and sometimes it takes up the entire first page or you know wow um, okay yeah yeah but okay. it just depends on what sometimes they have if you talk if you wanted to know like the best manufacturers of x product it'll tell you a little bit about it but it sometimes maybe will even list it like here's some products and sometimes it's really long and so then i do wonder like how did it decide those how did it decide to go those versus some of the other ones so yeah so given that you've been part of a pilot, did it serve up ads to you or was that just not even a thing? Um, it didn't serve up ads in the actual SGE box. Um, sometimes where the ads were, they were still ads on the page, of course, because it's Google and that's how they make money. Um, 
they switched where they were. So in the beginning, the SGA experiment was above any ads. And that was the first thing you saw. Then there was the ads and then there was all of the organic. Um, and now the ads are above that. Okay. Um, so I don't know where they land, but uh, so there are ads just the same, but they are kind of outside of that experience. Yeah. So what other observations about this past year beta program do you, did you take note of? The SGE paragraph was in a box and it was a colored box. And every time I went there, it would be a different color. Um, and I was trying to figure out the code of like, what is, does purple mean? It's this, is it, it's this. And I could not figure it out. Um, and I did read enough about it to know that everyone that's in this beta, which there's a ton and ton of people, um, they're seeing different things. So I don't know if the things I'm seeing are the same things other people are seeing. So I was like, is that how the colors are? Um, but gradually over the year, it's been really interesting that the colors have faded. <laughs> so it's more and Ooh. more kind of blending in to the white background that is normally my background in Google. And it's becoming less and less obvious, which is interesting that that's what it is. So that is something I've noticed. Um, it's definitely serving up better results, I think, now than it was in the first year, first six months. Um, it there's certain things that it just won't provide summaries on um, hmm. things like superlatives. And maybe that is due to the case like that, you know, the best leader. So if you type in the best, who's the best soccer player in the world, yeah. it will not give you a list. Oh, um, okay. it, it doesn't even provide an option to have that. If you ask for medical advice, um, like, is it okay to take Advil with St. John's work? It will not provide a summary. So it does seem like some of the cases where the stakes might be too high to have wrong information, mm -hmm. um, it's choosing not to provide that there, which seems like a good call to me. So, yeah. um, so that's definitely something else. So when it chooses else. not to provide that, it goes straight to links from reputable sources. Links or snippets bad. too. Okay. Um, and interesting, even when it does provide it, there still sometimes features snippets underneath, which didn't, in the beginning it wasn't, but now I am seeing kind of a combination. So there, yeah. as of now, it doesn't seem like it's always in place of snippets. Right. Um, one brand new thing that I actually saw this past week that I hadn't seen before is in addition to the sites it's sourcing, there's videos sometimes in that section too. Um, so that's interesting. So that that's sure is. That seems pretty new. Um, this is okay. new to me again, everyone's seeing different things when they're experimenting with this. So maybe other people have been seeing this for a while. I'm not sure, but yeah. Well, I know that you've been assessing it from a user's perspective, like how are technical mm -hmm. buyers going to utilize this? And then of course, how will it impact our clients? And so what, what are you thinking? Yeah. So the first, the first kind of thing that I did and looked at when I started seeing this, not just for Google SGE, but also for the other AI assisted search platforms mm -hmm. is, you know, some of these themes or topics or keywords that um, some of the clients that I work with are really, they, they have number one rankings. They rely on it for a lot of traffic. Are they still ranking that same way in SG or in the other AI um, assisted search platforms? And uh, for SGE in particular, they absolutely were not in the beginning. Um, so there could be something like control system migration is something that uh, a really nice piece of kind of considerations when you're upgrading your control system might be the first thing that came up um, because SGE really focuses on those third-party sources. It is prioritizing other sources like a trade publication over that for that, or if it is an area where there's academic research, it would prioritize that. Sometimes Wikipedia was even pulling up over some of these other sources. So that was definitely something that was concerning, um, you know, that maybe some of these areas that we were really relying on these really great rankings weren't showing up. Now, I have seen a little bit of a shift of that over this last year. There is still third party sources, but some of the really great, credible vendor created uh, material is now showing up more in that section. Um, some more recent stuff is showing up because a lot of times it would pull really old articles and that was really weird. So that has helped a, a little bit, but there's definitely a lot of cases where if you look at what's ranking in the top 10 organically for a term, those, many of those sources aren't even mentioned at all in 
the in the summary, which is really strange. And this was uh, maybe six months ago or so. I saw a stat that a little less than half, forty six percent of the top ten results are nowhere in these searches. Um, and this was kind of an internal wow. team doing this. And so it was not super scientific, but that was really interesting. And that was absolutely what I was seeing. So people yeah. that were, you know, just getting top billing weren't even included at all. Now I'm seeing a little bit of a blend. It just, it does seem like it's a little bit more of this organic search combined with the just sheer numbers of the AI generated search ranking yeah. methodology. Okay. And when you tested so, these terms on, say, a chat GPT or Claude or something like that, mm -hmm. again, it's hard to find sources on those. I know perplexity is one that's great for sources, but yep. it's still sort of the Wild West, right? It is. And actually, the Google SGE provides more sources than most of those. Perplexity does and has from the beginning. Um, but I have noticed more sources showing up even in chat GDP. Um, okay. Jim and I a little bit less, but there there are some. Um, so I do feel like sources are kind of popping up in all of them. Um, how someone ranks in these was very different across them. So there were some that like when Jim and I was barred, someone might be up in the top and barred. But then if you looked in, you know, chat GTP, they weren't showing up at all. So there's definitely some differences there and still are in kind of how how those are serving the results. Okay. <laughs> so I'm a marketer for a technical company. I'm sitting here listening to this. I'm feeling pretty uncomfortable with the statistics <laughs> and worrying about my organic traffic. So is there a good SEO strategy to optimize for AI assisted search? The grand question. I was <laughs> How do I say that's, yeah, that's the million dollar question. It um, really is. Yeah. So right now, um, the general consensus is that the more places your name is out there digitally, the more likely you'll be served up in these searches. Um, so it really is, you know, I for what a decade, two decades, we've been really focused on our own sites and our domain authority and making sure that those are really perfect and and that when someone searches something, that's the one thing that shows up. And the algorithm for these AI assisted searches are just a little bit different than that. It's more about a just statistical, when someone says this term, how often is your brand next to that term? And that will determine when they search that term, if that comes up. So it's not a, do you have one site that's really, really, really great in that term? It is, are you associated with that term across social and in trade publications and in other people's blogs and in podcasts and in every every place that you could be digitally that they might be training from. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so, and that's so today. That, that could change. That could you definitely know, change. It's so interesting, Jim, because when Google came out with the helpful content update, mm -hmm. it was all about quality and not about quantity. And in fact, in many cases, it made sense to kill blogs and to have less volume and make mm -hmm. sure whatever you had was really in depth, had the right quality, was novel, new information added to the body of work. Yep. So is it about, are we shifting now to just volume now or does quality matter? I mean, quality you always know, matters. I, right? I yeah. definitely, I, quality will always matter. Always, always matter. So first of all, the way that you get mentioned and placed and everywhere else all over is having great content. People don't reference bad content. And so the True. way that you keep getting placed everywhere is by having good content, first of all. Um, second of all, because it's going to bring up random old blogs, apparently, you want to make sure everything you have out there represents you well. You don't want to have a bunch of low quality blogs that represent you poorly coming up in anything. So it really is quality, but it's not just quality. You can't have like one really fantastic play piece or one great site. You have to have quality in several places um, and you have to be reputable across the board. And search rankings do go into the algorithm for AI assisted search too, especially with SGE. So it's not just how many times you're out there, although it, that is one of it. That is one of the criteria, but definitely it is also quality matters. Um, it always matters. And at the end of the day, someone that finds your information, you need it to be valuable. It's not just finding it. It's also like, yeah. are they going to read it? Are they going to convert? Are they going to trust you after they read it? And all those things have 
always mattered. Um, and they always will matter no matter what changes happen in algorithms and how things are being served up. Right. And in this age of quick AI generated content, that's kind of crap, but you can flood the market <laughs> with it. That's yeah. never a good strategy. And, you know, the more and more there's software that can detect that AI wrote that. And if that's yeah. the case, I don't even think you own the copyright for that. Do you? There's a lot of questions about that. So I definitely don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that works exactly. I know that there's a lot of conversations going on, on about that. A lot of it in imagery and, you know, art and things like that as well. Um, so that I don't always know about um, how that will come up and how that will impact um, of if you own it. But I do know that while you can come up with infinite amounts of AI generated content, um, the latest Google update um, definitely did tank a lot of sites that were just pure AI generated. They were detecting it. They were deranked. They were, they went down. They definitely got penalized for that, um, which is the kind of the first time I've seen that happen at an algorithm level. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely think just humans want to hear from humans in general. And AI can do a lot of really great things and they can help you a lot, but they can't start to finish, create a unique piece that has a perspective yeah. from a person. They're going to create generic content. And that is going to be detected not only by Google's algorithms, but by readers. I mean, that's definitely people crave real information and a perspective, not just straight facts. So if you're building a strategy here, Mm -hmm. You have search over here, and then you have your content strategy over here. And obviously there's a lot of overlap. So Tons. how yeah. do you, when you're working with clients, like how do you interplay between the two? Do you start you know, top down with content strategy and supportive campaigns and then think about SEO later? Or is SEO ingrained in that conversation with channels? Or tell me about your approach. I know yeah, it's a big that's question. A question. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's a it's a big question, but I feel like it's a pretty simple answer is at the end of the day, there are certain themes and topics that your company is experts in that your customers care about. And those are what you're going to write about. And you're going to do it because those are the, the, those are the topics that matter. And hopefully you'll rank in them because of that too. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're creating content specifically and only for SEO rankings, that's going to change. And it might work short term. It'll never work long term. If you're creating really great content on the topics that matter to you and matter to your customers, that is eventually going to win. It's going to be read the most. And when things are read and they're shared and they're talked about, they get more exposure, period. They get more exposure in search, but they also get more exposure from people telling other people about them. So you're always going to win if you're creating good content about what matters. And of course you're thinking about SEO, of course you're thinking about how to rank, but it is a afterthought. It is not when you're deciding what to write about, that's not how you decide what to write about. Got it, great advice. Okay, so this SGE thing, when, when, when is it rolling out <laughs> to everyone? Do we know? It feels like this has been a really long beta. It's been a very long beta. It was supposed to end at the end of last year. Oh. And it very quietly didn't end. Um, it just kind of keeps going. And I knew you would ask this. So I, of course, searched in Google and was like, when is this coming out? And interestingly, there was no SGE overview that told me it did not appear. It was one of those things like medical advice <laughs> that is like not provided. Oh, wow. um, and then uh, I went to Gemini. So Google's other kind of search AI assistant. Um, and that said that while there's rumors of it being in May, there's been no official <laughs> date. So we don't know. Wait, and so Google, Google doesn't know. And SGE doesn't know. <laughs> that's messed up. That's really messed up. I mean, and, and I'd heard that the beta is in like 120 or 150 countries or something like that. So it's a very oh, wow. big beta. Yeah. Something is going on. That it, it just feels kind of suspicious. Like, why isn't it out by now? Um, I forget that it's a beta. I kind of feel like, cause that's just what I see every time. And it keeps yeah. blending more and more in that. I'm like, Oh, it's not mm. out. You don't, you don't see what I'm seeing. So, um, but yeah, it is. Do you think, along, and we'll I don't know if the answer's out there and, but do you think that once it rolls out, 
traditional Google search will go away or do you choose? Not for a very long time. And, and it's not even choosing. It's just, just like snippets were there, but then the search is there. So to me, they still serve just different purposes. If you need a quick answer on something that's easy and a quick fact, you might get it there and go on. Mm -hmm. If you want to dig in and you want to hear different perspectives on an idea, if you want to learn a how-to, if you want to learn about someone's experience, you're never going to get that from a snippet. You're going to go deep and you're going to go to the sources, you know, that, that you trust and you're going to get it from there. So I think they'll live side by side. From, um, okay. So you go to for at least a while Google for that. You go to SGP for the other. Then when you, when would you go to Gemini? Uh, so Gemini just does a lot of things okay. more than search, you know, yeah, it enough. can help fair you enough. brainstorm. It can help you, you know, if, if I want to better understand you know, a biomedical engineer that's doing prototyping, what kind of background and degree do they have? Um, I get deeper information from Gemini than I do from SGE. So I'll, I'll go there and, okay. and, and search. And you can talk to it. So you can it give you an, it, an answer. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I meant only in here. One time it gave me an answer in a dual byte language. And I was like, can I have that in English? And they're like, yes, here you go. Um, and you wow. can't really interact with SGE okay. that way. So to me, they're, they're very different tools. It's, it's nice that SGE is in the Google platform, but yeah. there's definitely times that I go to Gemini or ChatGTP or Perplexity or somewhere else. Okay. So this will be interesting to just look at adoption and how many people move to SGE versus staying on traditional Google versus mm -hmm. moving on to Gemini and, and ChatGPT and BARD and or not BARD, sorry, but that's not right. <laughs> it's renamed. <laughs> oh, they, you can't keep up, right, Claude? All these things. So uh, maybe, you know, the idea that Google as a search engine owns 90 something percent of the market, that's going to look mm -hmm. very different in the future. And that, of course, has yeah. implications for your organic search traffic, as well as yeah. if you're an advertiser on Google, and now you yeah. want to get in front of people that are no longer going to Google. So oh, I'm glad you came by, Jen. I think we as marketers have to just continue to stay on top of this and watch behavior, ask those questions. I'm sure this will be a big focus of our 2025 State of Marketing Engineers Research Absolutely. Report. Absolutely. Uh, we did ask in 2024 how engineers are using uh, generative mm -hmm. AI tools. And the number one answer, which is over 60%, was for search. So yep. while they don't turn to it regularly like they do Google, they certainly do look at it, mm -hmm. uh, look to it first for search. So, yeah. yeah. And more and more, they won't even know that they're looking to it. It'll be integrated <laughs> into what they're right. doing and it'll be using it. Anyway, it's there, just native. being worked into everything they're using now. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's have you back on when it goes live. And if there's anything new that changed, uh, maybe we could do a little refresher on this. But uh, in the that meantime, thank you for sharing your experiences with Google. Thanks for joining me today on Content Marketing Engineered. For show notes, including links to resources, visit truemarketing.com slash podcast. While there, you can subscribe to our blog and our newsletter and order a copy of my book, Content Marketing Engineer. Also, I would love your reviews on this podcast. So please, when you get a chance, subscribe and leave me your review on your favorite podcast subscription platform. Thanks and have a great day.